All right, good morning. So I thought I would switch things up today and do like a my morning routine living in Hollywood, Florida. Not that anybody really cares, but sometimes it's fun to peek into other people's lives and just, you know, give you an idea of things I like to do each day. Um, and I'm just kind of getting bored of my old content. I just want to try new things and experiment with YouTube. So anyway, I'm just going to do my morning routine today. And to get things started, I always enjoy uh, some lemon and apple cider vinegar <laughs> water for breakfast that just, you know, wakes up the body a little bit. So that's what I'm going to start out with first. So that looks pretty good right there. Nice little lemon my water. I'm gonna squeeze that on in. All right. So here's my lemon water. This is actually my second one this morning. I already drank one first before I turned the camera on because that's what gave me the idea to make this video today. So I'm gonna drink this up and make some oatmeal for breakfast. All right, so here's my delicious oatmeal. It's actually about two-thirds cup oats and then I mix in about a half a cup or two-thirds cup of this blueberry mango strawberry mix. So here's my cute breakfast with my lemon water and you probably saw maybe on my counter but I also take Juice Plus. My family has been taking Juice Plus for almost 17 or 18 years so we're, we're definitely believers in the fruits of the veggies. So here's a nice morning breakfast. All right, so I'm eating my oatmeal, yummy. And sometimes I like to put flaxseed on here or like maple syrup, like I said, like just a little bit for flavor. But uh, I'm gonna skip both of those today, I think. But I can't say making like a morning routine video was like more challenging than I thought it'd be because I'm like, which angle should I shoot it at? Or what should I include? So bear with me as this is my first time. But yeah, it's been pretty fun so far. All right, so I had a change of plans. I actually am gonna add just a tiny bit of this maple syrup just to give it a little sweetness. Sometimes I add half a banana, but sometimes I'm just not in like the banana mood. It's just too banana-y. But I do try and stick to a plant-based diet about 80% of the time. Um, I'm not hardcore about it. I used to be hardcore and like, Believe it or not, when I lived in Spain the first time from like 2006 to 2009, I was pretty hardcore vegan. Um, so that made it really hard to um, eat a lot of things in the restaurants in Spain because a lot of things have ham and uh, eggs and, and some manchego cheese and things like that. But um, usually when it came to eating out, I just decided that when I ate out, I would just give myself a break so I could eat food and enjoy with my friends and I was like vegan at home and that definitely worked out for me pretty well. Um, so I don't try to be like too, you know, intense about it, just try to be realistic, real life. I feel like, and I was about that way for about five years, like pretty hardcore vegan at home. For me it was definitely more for health issues. like. Um, just good digestion and things like that uh, and just like longevity and you know preventing cancer and other diseases um, so I, I didn't really get too like hardcore about it but like in Spain when they heard vegetarian or vegan like 15 years ago before even like YouTube and things like that were out and there was a lot of you know vegan youtubers make it a little bit more popular these days but you know back 15 16 years ago um, it wasn't as common and um, when you said vegetarian people thought you just meant like that you like wanted more vegetables than meat or you know tuna was okay like or something like that so it was kind of hard and I kind of regret being so like kind of hard-nosed about it I wish I had kind of relaxed a little bit um, and enjoyed the food more so anyway like I said these days I eat probably like 75-80% plant-based maybe more some weeks but if you know if I want a chicken taco, I'll eat a chicken taco. It's like not the end of the world, you know? It's not, before I used to be like, it must be perfect. 
But as I get older, I'm like, you know what? Just chill, just relax. Um, just do the best you can. Enjoy life at the same time. All right, so we're moving on to the next part of my morning. I just took a shower, I washed my hair. I know I was looking pretty greasy at the beginning of this video, but I was trying to keep it realistic, you know? Like I wasn't like getting myself all fixed up before I even started my day. So anyway, ate breakfast, took a shower, and now it's time for some skincare. So in the shower, you know, I like to do two for one. I wash my face and my hair. So I have been using this brand, A Cure, if you can see that. It's actually local here to Fort Lauderdale, but you can buy it at Sprouts and Whole Foods, I think anywhere in the US. All right, so when it comes to my skin, it's pretty dry, pretty dry skin. I was really dealing with a lot of rosacea the last couple of years, and I think I finally like found the cure for rosacea. Um, but in general, like I found that the better I take care of my skin, like the less makeup I need. So I really focus on the like serum and moisturizer part of my skincare, um, and try and go light on the makeup. All right, so when it comes to like the serum, I tend to alternate between this brand, right here, the Acure Serum, it says Brightening Glowing Serum, and this the Beauty Counter Vitamin C Serum. Um, I've been alternating between these two the last month or so, and I'm gonna get a full-size Beauty Counter Vitamin C for Christmas, but right now I just have the, the samples, um, and if you want a sample, I'll send one to you. But anyway, um, so I've been using these mainly for my serum and um, I feel like it's a pretty good combination. I don't use the serum vitamin C every single day because I feel like for my skin being a little sensitive, maybe it's a little too too strong every single day, but this combination seems to work well for me. All right, so I'm gonna go with this one today. And you can see it's kind of yellow. It has turmeric in it. You can smell it too. Um, it has turmeric in it. Of course, vitamin C and a bunch of other stuff. I really don't know how this is looking because I'm looking at the camera. All right, I got my um, vitamin C serum on, letting that soak in. Sometimes if I'm feeling extra dry, I'll put the a cure serum on there too, just go all out. Like, see, my my skin can handle it. Let's just go. Let's just go for it. And so, like the last couple years, yeah, I've been really suffering from rosacea as an adult which is weird because I didn't have it as a kid. And I think it might have something to do with like my gut. I've been trying to really balance out because I had some gut, gut issues a couple years ago. Um, but I have to be really careful with what I eat. Um, I think like cutting out dairy and greasy foods has really helped. And I was using so many different moisturizers um, the last couple of years. And when my friend, um, one of my friends, like every time, like beauty counter would have like a a sale, she would tell me, and I go, you know what, like I really wanted to try this moisturizer, and it's kind of expensive unless it's on sale, um, or unless you're like a a consultant, you get a discount. So I started buying this about six months ago, and I probably already bought four or five of them because I love it so much. It was like the only thing that didn't make my rosacea worse. Um, so I just started buying a whole bunch of these and then finally like I was like you know what I should just become a consultant for the discount and um, just because I've been like recommending this product a lot and I do have samples if you want to try it out you know for your skin I think and another thing I really liked about it is when I put it on like I would even like when I go to wash my skin the next morning I could still feel the moisture on there so it's one of my favorite. I'm almost out, but I'm getting more for Christmas, so it's okay. So here it is. And the one thing is, like, if you put serum or a serum underneath, you really don't need as much moisturizer. Um, I probably look silly doing this, but I'm not using a mirror. I'm just, just touching my face. <clears throat> All right, I know my face looks really red right now, but that's because I was touching it. I'd probably stop right there if I'm just at home, but if I go out, I might use the uh, beauty counter like moisturizing I think there's a skin do or if I'm like getting really serious about my makeup this is like the skin tint um, but before using beauty counter I would often use this 
Tarte BB cream. It's like a primer, but it, you know, it works good for just like a base layer, smoothing out the skin. All right, so I'm gonna finish the rest of this beauty part, getting ready um, <laughs> in my dining room because it was just getting so hot in my bathroom and there's no air conditioning in there. The air conditioning just doesn't go in there. So anyway, back into the dining room. I don't use all beauty counter. Like I like to, to try things out, but as far as the things that sit on my face all day, like I like it to be as pure uh, as possible, like while still working and looking good. A lot of people have called beauty counter like a mix of like Whole Foods meets Chanel when it comes to natural clean beauty products and I feel like that's pretty accurate. So in general, I'll, I used to use this Tarte BB on my skin, but I use this a lot. Sometimes I mix them together because this is a little too dark for me. So today though, I maybe I'll just, I'll mix these two together and see how it goes. I'm going to use my little elf <laughs> mirror here. So, look. You know, just a few tip taps, tips. This is how I do it, people. So this is with the two products mixed together. I think I'm gonna add a little bit more of this to see what happens. All right, so here we are. A little mix of the skin tint and the skin dew. Okay, I'm satisfied with that. I like my real skin to like show. Like I like a little bit of imperfection um, it's totally fine with me. It looks natural. I just like it to look, you know, kind of like kind of blended. Overall, that looks pretty good. Now, I don't really use blush that much. Sometimes if I do, I have this Tarte blush. Um, this is their Amazonian clay 12 hour blush. It was literally with the, like a kit I got. Um, looks like that. But I don't use blush too much because my cheeks are already pretty pink, pretty, pretty red. So I kind of stay away from that. If I get, if I get festive with my makeup, you know, I just like to do a little fun sparkly eye look. For like this palette, I tend to like mix these two together. You could do that for like a smoky eye, but that's a little too high drama for me. Sometimes this lunar I put on my cheeks. Let's experiment. Put a little highlighter sometimes on my cheek for fun. Oh, that's flirty. Okay, there we go. On my nose, I don't know why. I see people do it here. They get, they go here and here. This like literally washes off after five minutes of drinking water. But anyway, now I do use like a uh, eyebrow pencil. This is the NYX taupe color. Definitely adds like a nice face framing look. Now if I just leave it like that, it looks a little harsh, so I like to just kind of soften it, just kind of rub it in a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Just so it doesn't look so like, Staunch. I don't want staunchy eyebrows. Just what else? Just, just a little structure to the face. That's what we're looking for here. Okay. Pretty satisfied with that. And last but not least, you got to use um, some of this CoverGirl eyebrow gel. Now, when it comes to like mascara. You know, I'm not really picky when it comes to mascara since I don't wear it that much. So, you know, you just go with whatever you like. 12 seconds later. All right. So, that's my makeup routine. 
in the morning. Like I said, as long, like if it's just at home, I'm just gonna put some moisturizer, serum moisturizer. Maybe a little like, this is always like a, this has sunscreen in it too. I think it's like 45 SPF or 15 at least, I don't know. So, has a little sunscreen, has a little skin color. You know, that's, that would be my like basic routine. My hair's drying already pretty good. So here's the final product. All right, so that was my skincare slash makeup routine for in the morning. Pretty satisfied with it, feeling good about it. I'm definitely ready for today. So, all right, so I've eaten breakfast, I've showered, I've gotten ready for the day, but there's one thing I do in my morning routine that I almost never try to skip, and I do believe this is the most important thing in my morning routine, and that is reading the Bible every single day. And you may be thinking, oh, Lindsay, that's so lame. Now, there was a time in my life where I was like, wow, you read the Bible? You know, why? <laughs> kind of idea. Probably about a year ago, I got a renewed desire to um, find out what I really believe. And if you watch my last video, I'll, I'll link it over here. Um, I do share my testimony of kind of going from like a lukewarm, basic Christian who didn't really know, know what I believed to like, kind of becoming like on fire Christian. And like even the Bible, it says like either be hot or cold, but if you're lukewarm, I'll spit you out of my mouth. And like when I heard that, I was like, whoa, you know, it's like be hot or cold, like choose one. So anyway, with that being said, like even that was about in 2013 when I kind of had that awakening um, from my testimony. So that's been, it's gonna be like 10 years in January when that happened, I definitely, wasn't necessarily like in the mood all the time to read the Bible. Um, so for a long time, like I definitely wasn't into reading the Bible. Um, but in the last year, year and a half, I've definitely had a renewed conviction and desire. So it's been something I've really been looking forward to doing every single day. And I'm coming up on like one year completing the Bible at the end of this month. And let me just say, like I did read the Bible when I lived in Spain. It took me about a year and a half and I read it like physically reading the Bible. Um, but this time I used the Bible app and a lot of, I would say probably more than 50% of the time I listened to the Bible, um, which I think is just as good. Like I really enjoy sitting down and reading it, but sometimes like if you're cooking or cleaning, it's like enjoyable to just listen to it. So if you really want to do that, you know, as maybe a commitment for yourself for the new year, or maybe you're just like curious what the Bible says, um, definitely consider getting the Bible app and, you know, finding one of their Bible reading plans. I had the Andrew Womack one year Bible plan. Um, I'll link it below if I can find it. Um, so that might be an idea for the new year for you, but I think more importantly, like reading the Bible is just like a really blessing to your life. Like you're really gonna start seeing things in a whole new way. But you definitely have to read the Bible with an open heart, okay? Because the Bible is designed to be like taken in by your spirit. If you read it from an intellectual standpoint or a critical standpoint, you're gonna miss the whole point, pretty much. So just keep that in mind if you're thinking about reading the Bible. If reading the whole Bible in a year is like a little overwhelming for you, I definitely would just start reading like um, Proverbs. Like Proverbs is the book of wisdom. And for me, like I love Proverbs. I try and read the Proverbs a day. I think there's 31 chapters, so you could just read one a day. It takes like 30 seconds. So definitely try Proverbs, um, Psalms or Proverbs. And then in the New Testament, try like Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians or Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. A lot of people recommend reading John first. Um, I really like Matthew. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they're like the four gospels. It's like basically like four different perspectives of the life of Jesus from his disciples. So those are always a good place to start. I really like Ephesians and Philippians. Um, Romans is good too. I would definitely say like the New Testament is a little easier to read than the Old Testament. Um, but I like Proverbs in the Old Testament. I think that's like anybody can read that and definitely chew on those revelations. 
So anyway, each morning I try and read, you know, three or four chapters, whatever my daily Bible reading is. And then I'll, I might read other things I'm just curious or interested in reading. Sometimes I also use a Bible commentary to kind of help me understand as well. My mom, she sends me these daily devos. They're from her church. Um, and they're really awesome. Like a daily devo is just something you could read in like a minute or two. But just kind of like sets your focus for the day. Love that. Um, I have this little book, Scripture Confessions for Healing. So if you're going through a health issue or something like that, it has a lot of the uh, scriptures uh, focused on healing and health. There's so much in the Bible for health and healing um, that I've gotten a revelation in the last year and a half that like God really does want you healthy. He wants you well. It is God's will to heal. So I've been really focusing on that uh, this past year and a half especially. So there's like so many, so many good things in the Bible. And it, I, for me personally, like I know a lot of people are like, oh, it's an old book. It's like out of date. From what I've read and prayed about, like the Bible actually becomes more and more um, relevant every day. But the Bible has a lot of revelation on that. And I feel like a lot of people just like, don't even like think about reading like the like one of the oldest books and the really unique unique thing about the bible is i think it has over 40 authors and it and it ranges um i think over like a thousand or 1400 year period of when all the books were kind of uh, brought together and some of the writers you know were fishermen and some were like kings like uh king david and, and solomon so it's a really unique book when you think about it from that perspective um and it has so many so many things in there it's just the whole idea is is to is that life may go well with well for you you know by kind of taking in this word and seeing how other people live their lives and you know learning from their mistakes and everything like that a lot of people think that biblical characters are perfect but in reality no they made a ton of mistakes um, but it was really that their faith in God and their trust in God that helped them to overcome and and be successful and, you know, fulfill God's calling on their life. So if you're kind of at a crossroad in your life and you really want to make like 2023 count or whenever you're watching this video, definitely dig into the word. Feel free to DM me on Instagram or shoot me an email if you have questions like how to get started. I'm more than happy to help on that because... Um, I've had friends along the way that have helped me too. And I just love talking about this because I know a lot of people don't necessarily talk about the Bible, but um, I definitely, it's one of the definitely things I love talking about. And it has, it has a lot of wisdom for direction in your life. So give it a chance, give it a try, you know, don't listen to what other people say. Search it out for yourself, the truth. That's one thing that I've really learned, like, Regardless of the way you were brought up, if you were brought up in another religion or atheist or, you know, never even thought about reading the Bible, like, find out the truth for yourself because at the end of the life, it's like, it's what you believe, not what your mom or your grandma or your rabbi or um, anybody in your life. It's like, comes down to what you believe. So you definitely should take responsibility for what you believe and learn. And in the Bible, it says to be able to give an account you know, to someone on what you believe. So it's important to know, like, okay, do I believe this or I don't believe this? So definitely, like, that's my challenge to you in 2023, to figure out what you believe and, like, get a firm foundation in, in your beliefs and stand strong in it. And it probably you will be challenged and, um, you know, it might change your perspective on life, but trust me, it'll be life-changing it'll be more life-changing than losing weight or changing your diet or anything like that definitely just like getting into the word finding out what you believe finding out your purpose and then living out of that place in 2023 it's going to make the biggest change in your life all right i'm sitting here in front of my dusty monstera plant my little buddy i try and keep him alive as best I can. And my snake plant. Actually, the snake plants, like, I see a lot of these at the beach. They grow wild over there. And that's my backyard. Alright, so there you have it. That's my typical morning routine. Sometimes I like to go for a walk or, you know, I might 
cook something for lunch or and then maybe edit this video later so anyway um if you have any questions leave me a comment below uh i'll try and put as many links as i can think of in the description as well and let me know what other kind of videos you might like to see i'm experimenting branching out trying new things so anyway that's my goal for the new year anyhow all right thanks so much have a blessed day and week and um i'll see you in the next video